request all of you to continue to pray. Uh, next Friday, by this time, we would be having the open air meeting. And I'm sure that God is doing spectacular things. And uh, the enemy is aware of it. Enemy tries to disturb us here and there, but God is on the move. Amen. Amen. And your prayers matters a lot because uh, enemy fears your prayer, by the way. <laughs> Amen. So when you pray, the kingdoms of darkness will be shaken and the light of God will pierce through and it will bring forth what God has in store for us and we will see the great victory. And whatever the seed you are sowing in your prayer and by your investment, you know, you will have a great harvest, the rich harvest, you are going to have it. Amen. And we will come back with the spoils. We will share it when we come back. May God bless you. Before we proceed the word, let's bow our heads in prayer and then we will. Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, fall afresh over us this evening, O God. We depend on you, O God. We trust in you, O God, O my Master. We look up to you, O God, for you to speak to us this evening in the name of Jesus. Father, your word, O God, O my Master, will pierce, O Lord, our hearts, our marrows, our joints, O Lord, everywhere, into our spirits, that, Lord, O my Master, anything which is hidden, your word will bring them out, O God, expose everything this evening in our life so that, Lord, we'll be able to walk a glorious walk, O my Master, in front of you in the name of Jesus, O God. Lord, we do not want to go back the way we came in, O God, but we want to go back with transformation, O God, with the Lord, O my Master, confident that we have met our God. God has spoken to us in the name of Jesus. Lord, this evening, especially I ask you, O God, circumcise my lips, circumcise my heart, that, Lord, O my Master, that I will not speak anything out of my own, but, Lord, every word will come forth under the unction of your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus, O God. You receive the glory, you receive the honor, O God, because your word, O Lord, will deliver us in Jesus' name. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The title of the word is, It's High Time. Amen. It's high time for everything. We will see what is the high time for, and then we will move on. It's high time that we move in right direction. It's high time that we realign ourselves to reach the destination. It's high time that we work diligently in the kingdom of God. It's high time that we take over the land for Christ, amen, for his glory. It's high time that we come out from every lethargy. It's high time that we get rid of extra loads which are pulling down, pulling us down rather, and shake them off from our journey to meet our Savior in the midair. It's high time that we prepare ourselves to present to the groom when he comes. That's what we are going to see. What is the high time today? And this is the time such as this God has given us to, you know, come out from everything. The spiritual atmosphere, the spiritual atmosphere is polluted so much and every day is getting worse. If you see, today is worse than yesterday, the spiritual atmosphere. And tomorrow will be worse than today. And every day it is get, getting worse. And we need to arise. And that's a high time God is asking us to get up. What is our response as the children of God and how we will react as the body of Christ is a big question mark. And that's what we are going to analyze. Romans 13, 11 says that knowing the time... That now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we have believed. As we know, Jesus Christ is coming soon. The second coming of Jesus Christ is at hand than we believed when we gave our life to the Lord God Almighty. The world of perfect light is at hand and coming closer to us because the light of this world is coming, second coming of Jesus Christ, and we are going, you know, getting closer to him every day in our walk. The glory of God with this power of rain is approaching us, and that's what, you know, we are also moving towards him. Which means we are getting closer to our world, which is the perfect world, which is the heavenly places, or we are going to rule and reign with him in New Jerusalem, and we will dwell in him. But before that, before that, God is asking us to do a few things so that his kingdom will be established, as we move, we cannot give rest unto us without doing anything concerning his kingdom. And we cannot feel happy or satisfied with our own salvation. But as much as possible, we will spread his kingdom. And that's not easy, by the way. That's not easy. We are going to see how we shall move and what are the things to be done in order to establish 
the kingdom of God in our lives so that we are, and as we, you know, read in the communion, that the son who sets free, we are free indeed. Amen? Hallelujah. And that's what we are going to see. Now, we call ourselves our Joshua generation, right? Do you believe that? We call ourselves Joshua generation, not Moses generation, but Joshua generation. Why? Joshua generation is not only believing in every promises, but possess every promises of the Lord God Almighty because they had to have win-win situation in every day of their lives. In Moses' time, the manna was provided. They were in the wilderness. Everything what we learned last week with Pastor Sam, he was teaching us that even the shoes, they grew with them. The cloth grew with them. They did not even, you know, you know, lack anything, even though they were living in the wilderness. But Joshua's situation was different. Joshua's generation is that the promises was given by God, but yet they had to attain those promises by believing it and possess every promises. Win-win situation took place because they had to fight every you know promises to take in their lives that's what happened so then what happened that the land which they conquered in Joshua generation they divided equally to the people according to the size of the tribe and then people had rest and you know they they, they actually removed everyone those who were living in those lands the wicked people the paganism the idolatry everything they removed and then they made safe you know uh, the, the place for them to live that's what you and I are called to do so first thing it's a high time to possess the land. That's what God has promised to us because we are the Joshua generation. That means we must possess the land. And this is the high time to possess the land. Joshua, this all the scriptures today, we are going through the book of Joshua. Here and there we picked up some scriptures. Everywhere we are going to learn about Joshua. In the book of Joshua, the scriptures were picked up. Joshua 1, 3 to 5. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon that I have given unto you. What he said, wherever your sole of the feet or foot tread upon that is given to you, means done deed. Yeah? I, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river of Ephrates, all the land of Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your post. There shall not be any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life as I was with Moses. So I will be with thee, I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. This is the promise to possess the land God has given to Joshua. Amen? Amen. Say to yourself, I am Joshua generation. Joshua. Tell your neighbor also, you are the Joshua generation. You not only believe in the promises. Repeat please. You not only believe in the promises. But we possess the promises. The land which is given by God, we will possess them, we will rule and reign, because God has given to us. Amen. As you spoke, let it be in the name of Jesus. Amen. But the, you know, is there any restriction God has given to Joshua? There is no restriction he has given. Is God limiting you with certain land? No, not at all. God was talking to Joshua and gave the promise of the whole world. In fact, he talked about the, all the direction of the land. He said, I have given to you as long as your, the sole of your foot tread upon it, I have given to you. Every place of the sole of your foot shall tread upon, God has given to you the same way. He didn't say that I will give it to you, but he said it was given to you. Will there be anyone who is able to stand before you? God said, no, nobody will be able to stand. Though they will stand, they will disappear because of God will chase them out. Was there any power of this world who are able to stop you from taking the land? No. No one will stop you. It is only you have the power to stop it. God has given you the destination and he will take you through. The devil cannot stop your destination because it is given by God. But is it only us sometimes we take a diversion and then by which it is getting delayed. Genesis 13, verse 14 says, And the Lord said unto Abram, After that Lot was separated from him, Lift up now thine eyes, and look from the place where thou art, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. I want you to you know, picture eyes. Look around you. Northward, this is the north. Southward, east, and west. Look around in the spiritual eyes. That the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel will open the eyes of our understanding to see all the direction that is given to us. Amen. That's what God is saying. That you know, see 
northward, southward, eastward, and westward, God is giving to you and me. And God will enable us to in inherit them. After we see with our spiritual eyes, God wants us to do an important thing also. It's not only you just picturize everything, because Abraham could not see everything by his physical eyes, by the way. Whatever his physical eyes could see, he had it beyond that. But yet, we are the spiritual children of Abraham. We could see everything with our spiritual eyes. And I pray that you know, we will be able to see with our spiritual eyes all the direction of the land which is given to us by God to rule and reign with Jesus Christ of Nazareth. But not only the vision is important, but also moving forward is very, very important. Now, God is saying that in Genesis 13, 17, as I have given you the vision to move around, he's saying that arise, walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it, for I will give unto thee. Now, if you see Joshua 1, 3, what, has, what God said? Wherever you are, the foot of your soul, tread upon, I have given to you. It's a past tense and done deal. But here, what he's saying, arise, walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it, for I will give unto thee. That means we must go and walk into that land, then only it will be given to us. Amen? It's a difference between, you know, having a vision. Vision is given by God and provision will be given by God alone. And then the action required by us, the moment we start to move, it will be given to us. It's not done deal yet. That is why most of us, or rather all of us, you know, going closer to the land where the milk and honey is flowing. Amen? It's high time to take the land. By the way, if you don't take the land, the enemy will take it. By, and rather, already the enemy has the possession over the land. But it is up to us to go and just chase the enemy out. Now, you may ask why God wants us to take the land, by the way. Why we have to take it? I'm happy with my, you know, four-bedroom house or five-bedroom house or a six-bedroom house or I'm happy with, you know, few acres which is given by God and I'm happy with, you know, uh, what I have. No. Why God has to tell us that you look around the world, northward, southward, eastward and westward and I'm going to give you a rise and walk through the land length and the breadth you walk and I'm going to give it to you. Why God had to say that? There is a purpose. And what he wants us to do with it once we possess them. Numbers 33, verse 52 to 53. You shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you and destroy all their pictures and destroy all their molten images and fight, flood down all their high places. There's a high calling of you and me in the demand of God that you and I will arise and walk to the length of it, to the breadth of it. The land is given to us. Not only we acquire the land, but at the same time, we have to do something which God asking us that we need to destroy all their idols. That means the picture. You need to destroy all the molten images, which is idolatry, and fight, pluck down all their high places so that what will happen, you'll be able to establish the kingdom of God in that land because you are the one, the display of heaven. God had allowed us to walk on this earth as a display of heaven. That's why Jesus prayed. You know what he prayed? Everything will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. Let your kingdom come and yours will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. You and I, when we walk in, on those earth or on those lands, the kingdom of God will be established and that's what exactly God wants us to do it. Once the possession is done, we must drive out all the inhabitants from the land. We must make their work inactive. We must destroy what they have built all these years and we must uproot every idolatry and paganism and establish the kingdom of God. That is the calling of you and me this evening. Verse 53 is very beautiful. And you shall dispossess the inhabitants of the land and dwell therein, for I have given you the land to possess it. By the way, I remind you, you confess by yourself you are Joshua generation. Amen. And when the land is given to you, you must destroy every picture. You must drive out every idol, the molten images, and you must uproot everything which is of the devil. That's what you have already confessed, that you are the Joshua generation. And now you are called to dispossess everything which is built by the people or inhabitants of the land and dwell therein because I have given you the land to possess it. When you possess the land, the demon cannot stay near you, by the way. The devil cannot stay near you. If it's staying nearby, that means we put our hands on the shoulder of the devil and we walk with it. No. Amen. The devil cannot stand because you already called to dispossess everything which is inhabited by the enemy. 
We must dispossess them who had the hold on the land thus far. We must dispossess every inhabitant from the history. We must erase them from the record and write the new laws of God. That is the calling. It's a high time for us to go and write the laws of God in every land and uproot everything which is done by the devil and destroy every pictures and it, you know demolish every 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 molten images and dispossess the enemies you know inhabitants and then you establish the laws of god and that is the calling this evening god is calling us now will you say i am a joshua generation amen amen may god bless you because you know we are joshua generation whether you like it or not we are Joshua generation and we are called to possess the land and it's a high time to possess the land. Not only we have done two things. Leviticus 18.25 also says, and the land is defiled, therefore do I visit the iniquity thereupon it and the land itself vomiteth out her inhabitants. The wickedness is high rampant, the land itself will vomit the wickedness from its own because you have tread upon those lands and you are called to dispossess everything which is enemy planted in that land and you are called to establish the laws of God, the new oracles of God for his glory. It's high time to cleanse the land. Amen. You not only possess the land, but you, what do you do? You destroy the pictures. I'm repeating again. You destroy the molten images and you destroy everything which is built by the enemy. And then what do you do? You dispossess the inhabitants. Well, not only you dispossess the inhabitants, but you will do what? You will cleanse the land completely by the blood of the Lamb of God because it's given by God alone. Then when the blood of the Lamb of God is sprinkled upon the land, the land becomes holy. Amen? And then you make the inhabitants of God in that place by the you know, presence of God, ushering into the presence of God. The land was de defiled by the inhabitants. The land is demoralized by the wickedness. The oracles of God was defiled by the sinful lifestyle. But we are called to cleanse the land. Can I hear an amen for it? Amen. We are called to cleanse the land for Jesus Christ. Amen. amen. Every rubbish must be removed in the presence of God. Because there is nothing can stay in the presence of God. And you must protect your territory by the way. It's not only the land I'm talking about. In the spiritual realm, maybe, you know, it's our own home, I can say. It's our own lifestyle. It's our own children's life. It's our own marriage. It's our own finances. Anything you name it, our territory must be protected because it is holy, because you and I are called by God Almighty and we are washed by the blood of the Lamb of God and we must be holy because everything in us must be holy and our territory must be protected. May it be our home, may it be our field, may it be our children, may it be our extended family, may it be our city. This is the time we ask God to give us the strength to possess the land. Amen. We must ask the Lord God Almighty to give us the strength to possess them in Jesus' name. To possess the land, we must follow God's strategy. This is the first step, the promise of God, that you will possess the land. Amen. The promise is given by God. And just I mentioned what and all you need to do. But to carry on all these things, there are certain things God is demanding. We must follow God's strategy to possess the land. To inherit the land, we need to follow his command. To dispossess the enemy, we need to abide his orders. We cannot just go and dispossess everyone who is living. You cannot do it. They are actually better than us. They are stronger than us. You cannot dispossess them. And unless God is allowing you to do. And unless God is chasing them. But he is asking you, arise and walk to the length of it and breadth of it. And I have given to you or I will give it to you. That's what God is saying. To dispossess the enemy, you need to abide his orders. To possess the land, we need to unclean our own, unlearn our own logics. Amen? We have our own logics and systems and strategies, but we must unlearn everything. You know, for example, those who learn driving in India, it's very difficult for them to get the license here. First, you need to unlearn everything what you learn. Because there you show the hand right, and you go left. <laughs> yeah? You put signal right, and then you go left, right? But when you come here, when you put signal right, you have to go right. So you must unlearn everything. It's better for us to, you know, not to learn license there and come learn here. It's easy for them to get the license. But if you, have, if you are a good driver in India, it's very difficult to get the license here. Amen. Because the signal you will not wait. In the red you will not stop. But here you have to stop. So to possess the land which is given by God, we need to get rid of 
unlearn certain strategy which is our own logic. We need to unlearn everything. We need to defend. Because here you are not going to fight, by the way. You are going to do certain things spectacular. And not like the world you are, have, you are going to fight. You don't have to do it. But God is saying that be present yourself in the army. Just see what, does, what God is doing it. So, our own logic, our own understanding. And adopt his instructions to avoid the wilderness. His ways are different than ours. Amen? Now, this is the high time to set the battle orders to possess the land. We cannot do it our own strength. We need to have a set of battle orders which is you know, given by God. Time to set the battle orders. It's high time that we understand the battle orders, by the way. If you're in the army, you better understand the battle orders. Otherwise, you will be missed. It's high time that we follow the battle orders. It's high time we observe his orders to win the battle. The battle orders are different from the worldly strategies. Very strictly, God says, you know, it is different from your logic. It's different from your understanding. It is different from the worldly system. Joshua 1, 6 to 8. This is the first strategy. Be strong and be of good courage, for unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. You need to do only two things. What? Be strong and be courageous. Be of good courage. For unto this people, all the land will be divided. And to us, all the land will be divided as God has promised us. Only be thou strong and very courageous. That thou mayest observe to do according to all the laws of God, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it right to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Amen. You don't have to turn from the strategy of God. You don't have to turn from the strategy of God to the right or left, but follow him. And then he says, the book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. This is the manual we believe, right? Amen. Every car has a manual, right? When something doesn't work, you immediately look to the manual. 99% we don't understand what is written. Yeah? But still we read it, we try to find out. I remember once me and my brother Ag, we were in uh, Chhattisgarh. We were coming back from Chhattisgarh. Midnight we were driving. A tire got burst. We were there two hours, I don't know how many hours we were there trying to remove the Stephanie tire. <laughs> one was reading the manual, one was reading this, one was, you know, everyone is trying to do, and I went below the car and tried to, you know, uh, unscrew the, but we don't know. Finally, we decided to stop one guy, the truck guy, and the, by the way, that area is like, you know, most of the Naxalites living, and nobody was stopping the car, and it was heavy rain, it's midnight, nobody was stopping it. One truck driver, he had the audacity to stop the car, but the truck, and he came, within a second, he pulled the chain, the tire fell down. <laughs> Amen. So, here, here, everything, it is written in the manual, we need to follow, that's it. If you don't know the things, you will miss the mark. The enemy will come, because the devil also knows the word better than us, by the way. But if you don't know how to tackle the enemy by the word of God, as Jesus tackled the enemy, we cannot defeat the enemy. The enemy will defeat us. In the end time days, Christian courage becomes stagnant. Because we don't have that courage to go. It becomes slowly stagnant in our lives. Christians become more dull and does not have that zeal as it's supposed to be. And that's the reason the rate of defeat is higher than the success. Do you agree that? At times... The rate of defeat is higher than the success because we don't follow the manual of God. We follow the manual of man. We follow the manual of Philistine. We follow the manual of the world. Then we give man died at the wheel. That's what happened. But the rate of success should be more than the rate of defeat because we must follow the uh, laws of God. But for that, we need to have courage. 
The world is forcing the Christians to adopt their system, and we are convinced to compromise to the extent that it does not seem to be sin anymore in our eyes. Even the Christian nations, they say it is not a sin. That's how they are talking about. But God's law never changes. Once we were newly born again, our spirits were longing for his presence and ran after his presence. But over a period of time, it has become less, and that made us busy with the world and not ready for the service of God. And we don't have that courage. And our courage for the Lord has become stagnant. Though God had promised Joshua that no man should be able to stand before him. Listen to this. Though God had promised to him that no man will be able to stand before him. Yet it was on condition that he should use all the military skills and obey his word of all the means even though you don't feel to obey you must obey amen someone said you know this is like a medicine even if you don't like it it is bitter just eat it it will do its part whether you like the taste or no don't like the taste sometimes when you read it is talking everything against of your life because you know god is saying that lord this is not for me maybe no when god is speaking to us let us take that word and then you know put you know uh, action on that word that's what it means yeah his word even though we don't feel it, we must obey. God will not have them or anybody of us. God will not forget about the world. God will not have us if we refuse to obey him, by the way. He will, we, he will not have us in his team. If we refuse to obey him, he will just chuck, chuck us out and then he will carry on with the vision. But we need help. Now, courage is not the absence of fear, by the way. It's different. Courage is different. You know, faith is different. And strength is different. I'm talking about courage. Courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is controlling the fear. Amen? Courage is what? Controlling the fear. That means you subdue every fear under your feet and you move in courage. That's what courage does. Yeah? And then courage is what? Ability to face whatever happens without being overcome by fear. That is what courage does. You may have fear, but you subdue every fear and then you move on. That is courage. You may have strength. You may have strength. You know, when someone comes, uh, you know, when thin man comes, maybe I'll think, you know, he's a thin man, I can beat him up because I'm strong. That is different, by the way. That is strength you may think about because you see your, your ability in your body. But courage is different. Courage is totally different. That's what biblically, the classical example is what the whole army of Israel was waiting 40 days between the valley. Waiting for whom? Fearing of this guy, Goliath. They were not even going near him. Saw the picture of him saw the you know the statue of him then you know like nobody can go near him yeah because they saw the strength but inside he was he must be fearing yeah but nobody was taking a first step to go but who had the courage david had the courage do you think that david could beat him up no david is a strong man no but david had the courage to go forward that is what god is asking so strength is different courage is different god is saying two things be strong and have good courage good courage is very very important for you and me to face every situation because when 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 any anything happens what we do we immediately go to the balance oh, okay i have this much so i will solve it okay okay what has happened okay this happened okay maybe we will solve it through this now everything is gone imagine Every strength is gone. Every resources is gone. What you will do? You need to have courage. So God is asking all of us to have courage. But what we do? We try with all our strength everywhere. But we don't have a courage to move forward. And that's what exactly 40 days they were in the wilderness. They were in the valley. Between the valley. Not going near Goliath. But this guy came with one shot. He just knocked him out down. Because he had the courage. He had the courage to face the lion. We may have the strength to face the lion, but if you don't have a courage, you will run away, right? First of all, we don't have strength to face the lion, first of all. But yet, if you have the strength, if you have a gun, whatever you have, but still you need to have a courage. Even, you know, if you see a snake in the, in the, in the museum, somebody, you know, when we went out somewhere at Sing in Singapore, the guy was having a python. We knew that it is, you know, poisonless. He was holding it on his shoulder, and he was about to put it on Sheila's shoulder, for example. She ran away. We said, this is only snake and it cannot do anything. But we know that. But we don't have that courage. 
We knew that by our vision that it is, it is helpless, but yet we don't have the courage. That's what the enemy actually is doing in front of us. Most of the time we lose courage in front of the enemy and enemy take hold of that and then, you know, trying to hold us. We are Joshua generation. As I mentioned to you, we are not only believe in the promises, but possess the promises and live on the promises of God. We cooperate with God to bring all the victories through our obedience and get into the battleground and fight against the enemy and chase the enemy to possess the land. We are all strong in the Lord, by the way, right? Yes. We are all strong in the Lord. Yes. Amen? Yes. Are you strong in the Lord? Yes. Now, if I ask you, are you courageous in the Lord? Yes. You must be courageous in the Lord also. Yes. Because if you are strong in the Lord, you have seen his goodness in your life. But if you need to have a courage, even though you have not seen anything from the Lord, still you trust in the Lord. That is courage. Yes. Amen? He will do it. That's what happened. That's what happened with the people, the three young Hebrew boys. Though they were facing a lot of trials, they had the courage to speak in front of the king. That's what happened. We are all strong in the Lord. And we believe that we are strong in the Lord. Question to ask us ourselves, are we courageous in the Lord? Being strong alone will not take us to the promised land and possess them. But we need to be courageous to reach the promised land. Because the, the way, the pathway is not that easy. There will be scorpions, there will be snakes, there will be valley experience. Everything will be there. You don't need strength to overcome. You need to have strength. But at the same time, if you don't have the courage to overcome all the valley experiences, then you will not, you know, cross over, but you will stay back. Courage is the willingness to take action, and it is an effort. It is an effort. Strength comes within, but courage comes from God. It's an effort. The more you move on, courage will come. You cannot, you know... You know, tell me that no, I'm so courageous until unless it has come from God, the spirit of God, you cannot attain it. The strength you may attain it by going to the gym, by, you know, exercising or by having diet and, you know, building up your muscles, whatever you can do. But the courage comes from the Lord God Almighty. Be alert to everything. Courage is what it does. It will make you alert to do everything, physically and mentally. It will make you to be agile. It will make you to be quick. It will make you to be energetic. It will make you to be brave. It will make you to be fearless. It will make you to be valiant. And it will make you to have a lion hearted. And it will make you to be bold. It will make you to be adventurous. It will make you to be audacious. That's what the courage does. And by the way, courage is a command for Christians. It is not for outside people. Courage is a command for Christians. It is both attainable and mandatory. That's why Paul was encouraging who? Timothy. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but what? Love, power, and sound mind. All these things have, brings courage from the Lord God Almighty, and that's what will happen. What will happen if you are only strong and not courageous? What will happen? We'll see. If we are not courageous, eventually fear will overtake us. Yeah? When fear overtakes us, it brings discouragement in our life, and, life, and once we are discouraged, that will lead us into loneliness, and that loneliness will eat our joy and peace. Only we are strong, and if we are not courageous, then the fear comes, and the fear brings what? The discouragement, and discouragement brings loneliness, and the loneliness take away every joy and the peace. That's why God is saying that 2 Chronicles 15, 7. Now, you men of Judah, you men of AGC, you women of AGC, you little angels, you youth of AGC, I can say, be strong and courageous for your work will be rewarded. Amen. Amen. Everything you do for yourself, for the Lord God Almighty, everything, because even for you, you do something, it is because for the glory of God, you are doing it. Make it. Amen. Tomorrow you are going to testify of his goodness when you do something for yourself and it is achieved. That's what. And God is saying that be strong and courageous for your work will be rewarded. If we stand strong, if we stand courageously, we'll be rewarded by our God. And don't get discouraged that your work is not being noticed by anyone. Most of the time, discouragement comes. You do your effort, but yet people are not noticing. Your boss may not notice you. Your pastor may not notice you. Your, your, your you know, fellow brother does not notice your things. You don't have to get discouraged. But God is the one watching over you, and God will give you the reward. Amen? Be strong and courageous, for your work will be rewarded. Psalm 106, verse 30. But Phinehas had the courage to step in and the plague was stopped. You know the story? What has happened? God was, you know, destroying them with plague. People were dying that time. Phinehas, the Levite, just went, what he did? 
just quenched the anger of God. That's what he did. So you need to have a courage when some calamity is happening. You need to have the courage to move forward and then God will just turn it around. That's what will happen. Phinehas had, had the courage to step in and the plague was stopped. Your courage has the power to quench God's anger. When we see God's anger in our surrounding, we need to be more courageous to step in and ask God to spare them. Moses stood with God and pleaded to him not to destroy the Israelites when they turned against God. By the way, our war is not an ordinary war. Do you believe that? It's a holy war. Amen. It's not an ordinary war. It's what? Holy war. Amen. It's a holy war and fought by God, not by people, by the way. Holy war, we, fight, we don't fight. Our God fights for us. That is why it's a holy war. And God will fight for us always. That's what you know, it says. Only we will sing what? We sing glory and honor and power, strength to the Lord God Almighty when we achieve the victory. That's what we do. We don't fight, but our God fights for us. And we need to have that courage to move forward, to be in the army so that God will do. Now, once we have the courage, what we'll do next? You need to have unlikely faith to move on or you need to have uncommon faith to move on. Only with the courage, you cannot stand alone. What David did, he just ran towards the enemy's territory and then he killed the enemy. He didn't stand and just challenged him because Goliath himself, he was fearful in his heart maybe and he did not even want to come after his border and these people also did not cross the border. But David, what he did, he ran to the enemy's territory and destroyed him. That's what unlikely faith we need to have it when you want to destroy the enemy you mustered courage you mustered faith and then move towards joshua chapter 2 verse 1 joshua son of nun sent out shittim two men to spy secretly saying go view the land even jericho and they went and came into an harlot house named rehab and lodged there joshua 2 23 so the two men returned and descended from the mountain and passed over and came to Joshua the son of Nun and told him all things that befall them. Verse 24, they said unto Joshua, truly the Lord hath delivered unto our hands all the land for even all the inhabitants of the country do faint because of us. Have they seen by their eyes? No, they have not seen. But they had the faith because the, the king sent the soldiers for these spies. They heard about the spies and he sent the you know, soldiers to catch them and bring them so that, you know, because the fear actually already gripped in their heart. Now, if you remember the story backward, when Moses sent 12 spies, two came with good report. So the percentage ratio is what? One is to six, right? Six person, one person came with a good report. 12 person went, two came with a good report. Now, Joshua, what he did? He reduced the number. He sent only how many? Two people he sent. That's what we said, right? He sent Shittim, two men to spy secretly. Chapter 2, verse 1. So two of them came with good report. That means now the faith is what? 100%. That is why you and I are called Joshua generation. That means we need to have 100% faith, even though we have not seen anything which God has done already. But he will do it because of your faith. And he has promised already in your life and my life. The ratio was 1 is to 6. That means 16 percentage of faith was operational and disunity came among the 12. As a result of lack of faith, what happened? And due to disunity, all the people who are 20 years old and above fell dead in the wilderness except those two. But these two came with good report and they were able to take the nation. See, two people's faith took the nation. Ten people's lack of faith destroyed themselves and other people along with them. No, this is a time for us to check our faith where we have. 2 Corinthians 13.5, this is the examine time for us. Examine yourself, Paul is urging. Examine yourself to see if your faith is genuine. Test yourself, surely you know that Jesus Christ is among you. If not, you have failed the test of genuine faith. You know where you are. Just examine yourself and Jesus Christ is living in you and have genuine faith. The basic foundation of Christianity is what? About faith in Jesus Christ. Amen? The basic foundation of Christianity is having faith in Jesus Christ. The faith is the basic foundation rather. Yeah? 
foundation, can you see, have you seen foundation above the building top? Foundation is always laid in the below the soil. That means the whole load of the building is taken by the foundation. That means your faith, your life is taken by the faith which you have, have the foundation in Jesus Christ will determine your, your, your capacity or your lifestyle, how you are moving forward. So basically the foundation is the faith, basic foundation of Christianity is faith. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah? Amen. Amen. If, if we are weak, it means our faith is weak. If our faith is weak, it means our foundation is weak. That's why 1 Corinthians 13, 5 says, examine your faith, whether it is genuine or not. God wants us to have uncommon faith to possess the land for us to enjoy. Many incidents are written in the Bible about the heathens who had uncommon faith in God and that changed their destiny irrespective of their background. We just learned, uh, read about Rehab also, but we didn't dwell much on that. But just, you know, I'll give you a glance. Rehab had uncommon faith in Jehovah God and that brought her entire family to the kingdom of God and she married to Salmon who was the father of Boaz and his wife was Ruth and they were the parents of Jesse and who was the father of David and then Jesus Christ came from the tribe and was born in Bethlehem. See, one lady's faith, even she had a wretched background, but yet her faith actually brought the entire family into the kingdom of God. And then she became wife of Salmon. And then Salmon and Rehab bore Boaz. Boaz became the father of Jesse. And Jesse became father of David. And then David became ancestor of Jesus Christ. How beautifully God works. Amen. Our uncommon faith must create history in the kingdom of God and in your life and my life. Otherwise, it is not faith. So our faith must be genuine in the Lord God Almighty. And we should have uncommon faith in God because God is the one doing everything. In that case, how much more we need to have faith in God than even Rehab because Rehab did not see that or tasted the goodness of the Lord God Almighty. But you and I are tasting or experiencing the, the, the goodness of the Lord God Almighty every day. Then how much more we need to have faith. Genesis 22 to 2 to 5. 22 verses 2 to 5. He said, God said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went into the place which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place far off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Amen. This is called uncommon faith. We are called ourselves the children of Abraham. Abraham, what he said to the, the, the servant, you just be here. We are going to worship the Lord and come back. He had that audacity to say, even though God told him, you know, you make the burnt offering through Isaac. But he said, he looked as the worship unto the Lord God Almighty. That's the difference. Amen. God told him, bring a burnt offering of your son and just, you know, lay him on that wood. But he looked as the worship unto the Lord God Almighty. You know, worship never brings disaster in our life. Worship brings actually blessings in our life. That's why he said, I'm just going to worship the Lord and we will be back. Even though, you know, God told him directly to do certain things, but his faith actually different than ours. And that is why we are called the children of Abraham. Amen. Because of his faith, we also added into the kingdom of God. Then we must have that uncommon faith in our lives to move forward. Amen. If we have faith, now what we learned so far? God has given the promises to possess the land. When God has given the promises to possess the land, he asked us to be strong and courageous. When we get the strength and the courage from the Lord God Almighty, what we need to have? We need to have unlikely faith to move forward. So when we have the faith, what we will do? With faith, we will stand here. What we will do? We have to move forward. That's what it's high time for us to move forward. And that's what we are going to learn. We are Joshua generation that not only believe in the promises of God, but possess those promises of God. After we have that faith in God, we must move in that faith to possess them. We need to act that uncommon faith with work to bring those promises alive. Otherwise, our faith will be dead faith. 
Joshua chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. Joshua rose early in the morning, and they removed from Shittim and came to Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and lodged there before they passed over. And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host, and they commanded the people, saying, When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priest, the Levites bearing it, you shall remove from your place and go after it. And then 3, 5 to 6. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And Joshua spake unto the priest, saying, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass over before the people. And they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went before the people. When we move forward, we need to follow his ways to move. We cannot move the way we want to move, but the way he wants us to move. Deuteronomy 5, 32 to 33, what way? You shall observe to do, therefore, as the Lord your God has commanded you. You shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. When we move, what we do? We will not turn right or left, but we will just focus our attention towards the Lord God Almighty. And that's what he said. Take the Ark of the Covenant and follow the priest and just follow them and you will see the victory. That's what God is giving us. God is telling us to move forward and straight, not with deviation. No distractions while we move. And then verse 33 says, You shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God hath commanded you, that you may live, and that it may be well with you, that you may prolong your days in the land which you shall possess. When we walk, we will live, and it will be well with us, because if we walk in, our, in his ways. Amen? I'll skip a few scriptures. Okay, Sanu? Now, when we move on the way, we will face the enemy. Certain things we need to do just to keep our ways clear. Priority of prayer. It's high time that we spend more time in prayer to possess the land. Amen? To possess the land, God is asking us what? To be strong and courageous and then to have uncommon faith and then move forward. When we are moving on to the destination, we must spend time in prayer and we must set our heart priority in prayer. Even after we had that uncommon faith, we put that faith into action to move forward. The enemy will stop us from moving forward. The enemy will deceive you. And you and me will, while we are in the land or while, while we are in the move, the enemy will distract us with the facts and the logics to delay our moves. Joshua 9, 14 to 15, how they were distracted, we are going to learn. So the Israelites examined the Gibeonites' food, but they did not consult the Lord. While you are on the move, People will come and try to deceive you if you don't consult with God Almighty. Day-to-day -day basis, we must consult with God so that nobody will be able to deceive you. Then Joshua made a peace treaty with them and guaranteed their safety. And the leaders of the community ratified their agreement with the binding oath because of which they are to bear a lot of consequences. Even Saul and his family members died because Saul wanted to kill Gibeonites. And then the death came because these elders and the leaders promised a binding oath to the Gibeonites that they will not do anything, but they made peace treaty. That's what happened. So the consequences, even though it is wrong, they kept it to the core because people wanted to kill Gibeonites, but they said, no, we have made an oath and we have to keep them. But Saul actually destroyed the Gibeonites. And then Gibeonites came back to David and asked all the family members. But David said, just keep away the Jonathan son. And that's what happened. So people may come and deceive us if we don't pray and move forward. That's what will happen. When God gave the command to Moses and later to Joshua, the command was very clear that all the inhabitants must be dispossessed and cleanses the land for the Israelites to live. But they did not obey the voice of God. They did not consult the voice of God, but they just gave place for the Gibeonites to stay. The lack of prayer will cause our ears closed, and that we can't hear from God. What I said? The lack of prayer actually will close our ears that we cannot hear from God. Yeah? The lack of prayer will cut off the communication from God when the enemy come to deceive you and me. If we don't consult with God, we will be defeated, by the way. That is a sad truth, but it is accepted. It's high time that we, as the body of Christ, will go into that intensive prayer. Why, you know, we display the prayer request and we ask you to pray. You don't underestimate your prayer. Maybe you don't know what you are doing, but you are doing great things in the kingdom of God. That's why I said your prayer actually 
pierce through the darkness because your prayer is the light and it will pierce through the darkness and it will bring forth every hidden treasure and that's what happened most of the time we pray but we don't believe but mark very clearly says when you pray believe them and you shall have them and you will have them amen so urge you i take this opportunity to ask you pray for that place the open air meetings and the groundbreaking of the church god is going to do spectacular things amen the enemy is already joining hands with the leaders of the world to stop the work of god in many ways by the way you know the book of esther haman he joined hands with the king and he got the letter from the king to destroy the people of god yeah there are many spiritual hamans today they join hand with the leaders and just writing the decrees against the people of god and trying to destroy the people of god but don't be fearful god is raising more mordecais and more esthers the decree will be reversed the decree will be what reversed before the appointed time the enemy has appointed time for to dis- to destroy us but just god reversed it at the same time the decree has been reached to the places where this people took over but what was the key the prayer what was the key the prayer what she said if i perish i perish but you go and declare a fast i am also fasting with you 3 days and we will see the victory that 3 days of fasting and prayer changed or reversed the decree of a king amen do you think that your prayers help you know useless no even the intensive prayer one minute you pray because that's what you know i always believe strongly when we pray you know the angels standing next to us with a pure golden censer that they take our prayers so that you no know, this roof will not stop nothing will stop the power of persia will not stop but our prayer directly will reach heaven and then they will mix with the incense they pour into the altar of god and then god smell them and then they pour from the heaven and you receive thunder signs and wonders and miracles why it is written in revelation 3 and 8 why it is written for us to understand the prayer of the saints has more power imagine when you pray in the morning you are 200 people 200 angels are taking your prayers there is a traffic jam but yet they have their own way to reach heaven your prayer is not hindered my prayer my prayer is not hindered by your prayer because we are praying unto one god amen and by the way your prayer has more power than anybody else prayer people may pray before than you but yet your prayer has the power to pierce through the third heaven because the prayers are taken by whom taken by whom angels the lord of host the prayers are taken by whom the lord of host not by any pujari not by any speaker but it is taken by the holy angels the lord of host your prayer has the power but the enemy is already joining hands with the leaders of the world to stop the work in many ways by the way but don't be discouraged you don't have to be fearful of the laws and decrees and god is already raising many esthers amen by the way satan fears nothing but your prayer satan does not fear of my wealth satan does not fear of my qualification or your qualification satan does not even fear how beautiful i preach but satan fears the moment you start to pray amen satan fears because your prayer brings the presence of god your prayers actually brings the lord of hosts in your attention and then the prayer brings the worship unto the lord god almighty and then when you go the enemy must be destroyed because you prayed unto the prayer hearing god and prayer answering god even isaiah 65 24 says that even before they finish it i will go one step ahead and answer every prayer that means god is waiting with answers for your prayers have you prayed today even i put a quote today in our in my facebook page you know prayer is what it's a preventive medicine for all the diseases i put a spelling mistake i'll correct it later on <laughs> amen prayer is what the preventive medicine for all the diseases spiritual diseases by the way and even physical diseases prayer has the key for your success and my success satan doesn't fear anything but your prayer is the weapon that will destroy the enemy we must give priority to our prayer so that the enemy will not come near you not when we face the challenges but all the time that is priority what is the priority even you like it or not you pray that is priority even you know you have nothing to ask 
just you pray. You usher into the presence of the Lord. You worship the Lord and then things will happen. God takes it serious when you pray. You don't underestimate your prayers. Your prayers are so precious in God's eyes. And God is waiting with answers. That means he just wants us to pray. That's it. Open your mouth and pray. There is a say, you know, the miracle is in your mouth. But I may say that the miracle is in your prayer. Amen. The moment you pray, the miracle is happened already. Amen. Whatever the situation you are in, it doesn't matter. Your prayer will enable you to come out from every challenge, by the way. Only prayer has the power to change your situation and my situation. And we have seen mighty miracles through prayer in this church. And God is witness and you are witness. We have put the prayer request for everything. Most of the time we put it in the group. You know, and we ask everyone to pray. Why? Because the prayer is not a light thing. Prayer has the power and the enemy must get away. Get away and run away from you and me. Because the enemy cannot show his face when you and me pray for something. That will happen. Amen. Also, prayer is the oil for that fire on the altar. I said something. Prayer is what? Is the oil for the fire on the altar to burn in the presence of God. If we don't pray, the oil will not be supplied to the fire on the altar. And then it will burn out. Pray constantly so that the fire on the altar will never burn out in Jesus' name. Pray constantly and consistently. Joshua 8.30. Joshua built an altar unto the Lord God Almighty. Israel in Mount Ebal. Yeah? So create an altar of prayer in your house, wherever you go, and that will bring the presence of God Almighty, and the enemy fears your prayer. Because when you pray, what will happen? You usher into his presence, and then you worship the Lord God Almighty in your prayer, and then God will speak to you. That's what we are going to see. Word is the strength to the battle. Nothing else. Not your weapon. But the word of God is the strength to the battle. And then we will close it. The word of the Lord is the knowledge of the Most High. And there is nothing above his knowledge. I said, possess the land. To possess the land, you must be st strong and courageous. Once you have the courageous and courage and strong strength, what do you have to do? You have to have uncommon faith to move forward. Once you move forward, on the way when you face the enemy, you must have priority to pray unto the Lord God Almighty. Then when you pray, what will happen? God will decree a thing and it will be established completely on your way and my way. And the word of the Lord is what? The knowledge of the most high. There is nothing above his knowledge. Do you think that anything is above his knowledge? There is nothing shall remain above his knowledge. Psalm 119.105. Thy word is the lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. 119 verse 165 says, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. If you have the word of God in your life, if God speaks to you, that means you have great peace. Verse, same chapter, verse 133 says, Order my steps in thy word, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. When you pray, and when you worship, when God gives his word, what will happen? He orders his, your step and my step by his word, and then the enemy will not have dominion over us. When you hear the word of God, you give first place to that word of God and also make it final authority, by the way. Most of the time what we do, we hear the word of God, but we don't give final authority to that word of God. We just think logic at that word of God. And that is why the word fails. Word never fails, by the way. But we don't put that faith in that word to act. That's what happened. Yeah? Always ask God the word of God. Uh, Ask what the word of God says about your situation and my situation. Whenever we sit in the presence of God, ask the Lord God Almighty when he speaks to us. As I said, the manual, when he speaks to us, ask the Lord, what is the, what is the answer for my situation? Then God will answer every, every, everything for your life. A small testimony before I close. You know, for uh, Sheila, we applied almost seven universities in the world, except India. India we applied, but it didn't do anything because I didn't want her to study, by the way. But still, we kept as open, you know, door for that. And then we applied for seven universities. We applied one of the best universities in UK, and we applied some best universities in Europe, and we applied even in Cyprus, even in Italy, even in uh, Czech Republic, we applied everywhere. And then we asked the Lord, God Almighty, UK is the best education, as everyone knows, but we didn't have money to pay that much. We were thinking our bank balance, we were thinking our you know, focus of our, 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 our uh, what, what that forecast of our 
you know, finances, everything, but then we couldn't do anything. So we told one thing to the Lord. Lord, if Sheila has to go to UK, then you close every door, then we will take it. This is from you. And I even, I was talking to one of my brother here in the church. I said, no, I'm just waiting for God's sign. He said, no, don't wait too much for God's sign. I said, no, I will make sure that, you know, God give a sign that I will not make any mistake. If God wants to, wants her to go to one university, let God close all other universities. By the way, all other exams are very easy, but she didn't get through the easiest universities at all. When God closed, you know, you just wonder. And God kept only the UK door open. And Saturday morning, 10.30 was the deadline for us to pay to UK University that they gave us the deadline. And 10 o'clock, we were waiting for one result Saturday morning. And 10 o'clock, that last university, which she was writing in Prague, that also they said, admission denied. And then 10.30, we went and paid for UK University. And that's what God confirms. <laughs> Amen. Your prayer, it is for the glory of God. We just ask the Lord to provide everything. But what I'm saying, God will provide. When you pray, God will show everything. Yes. Your prayer has the power. I, I said, Lord, you know, I don't want to make any mistake. I don't want to show myself, you know, a great man, you know, I put my daughter in UK. No, I don't want to do that. But if it is your will, let it happen. And you know the best for her. And that's what God will do in your life and my life. Because God actually, you know, asks us to pray much. And not only that, Matthew 4, 4 says, he answered to the devil also, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. We must constantly feed on the word of God. Amen. When you feed on the word of God, what will happen? The faith which is in your life is you know, fed by the word of God. And then your spirit becomes agile. It will build us up and it will strengthen our faith. Hebrew 4.12 says, the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder and of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The word has the power to reach everywhere. When you pray, when you worship, when he sends forth the word of God, his word in our situation, it will pierce through everywhere. That's what I said. But the sad state is, I want to say that. I want to say that. There will be famine of the word of the Lord. It's not that word of the Lord will pass away. No, heaven and earth will pass away. But the word will never pass away. The word will never pass away. Amos 8, 11 to 13. It says, there will be time of famine for the word. That's why it's very important for us to pray much. So that the word of God will be stored up while it is found. There will be a time... Even if you want to have the word, you'll not be able to find. You'll not be able to find. It's not that his word will pass away, as I said. Heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will never pass away. There will be a time that we will face famine to find the word of God. But this is the time. That's why I put the type topic, it's a high time. It's a high time to have a courageous courage. It's high time to possess the land. It's high time to have unlikely faith. It's high time to set the priority or in order and then move forward. It's high time to pray much. It's high time to, you know, have the word of God in your life and my life. Amos 8, 11 to 3, 13. Behold, the days come, say the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, by the way, not a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, but shall not find it. It should not come for us that we will be rich always in the word of God. For that we need to store this manual in our lives. That even you are in the wilderness, like Jesus Christ was taken to the wilderness, but he spoke the word of God to the devil. It is also written. It is also written. It is also written. He did not see the circumstances, but then he chased the devil away. And I pray that this will never happen to us, the famine of the word of God. But we will, neg we will you know, neglect the world. We will neglect the world but we will accept the word of God while it is near. Otherwise, if you neglect the word while it is near, it's very difficult to find the word of God. By the way, your prayer actually will usher God to come and speak the word of God. Amen? Your prayer has the power to bring the presence of God. And then you'll be able to lift up your face unto God and he will speak to you. Once he's decreed, everything is settled down because his word has the power. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's all arise in the presence of the Lord. And then we'll close in prayer. Romans 13, 11. 
That's what we started. Knowing the time, as I mentioned to you this evening, knowing the time, and that now it is a high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Amen? The time is high time now. If at all we are sleeping spiritually, it's a time for us to get awake from the sleep. And then because the salvation, which is the destination is nearer than when we believe the Lord God Almighty. May God give us the grace that we will possess the land and God will give us the strength and the courage and God will give us the uncommon faith to move forward. And then God will give us the time to you know, prioritize our prayer life so that he will be able to speak to us through his word so that the land will be divided to us where we will be living you know, you know, in peace with God. Because the word of God what does? It brings peace into our hearts, into our spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the time if you want to pray, pray and ask the Lord God Almighty, make me a house of prayer. If anybody can sing, please, the choir team, any one of you can help us. Make me a house of prayer. And the fire on the altar never burn out. And we will be day and night, night and day, that God will make us to be the house of prayer, that we will be victorious in every area of our life. And we will never be defeated in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Quickly, sister, we have only two minutes. Thank you, Father. You can pray unto the Lord God Almighty that make us a prayer, house of prayer, that the fire on the altar will never burn out, but he will make us a house of prayer, and that will bring victory in your life and my life, where we'll be able to possess the land and live a victorious life in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Jesus. Let's cry unto the Lord God Almighty to make us a house of prayer. It's our personal cry unto the Lord. Let's mean it when we sing it. So God, make us a house of prayer. That Lord, the fire on the altar will never burn out. And Lord, we will not be bereft of your word, but Lord, your word will dwell in us richly in the name of Jesus God. We will never come to that stage, God, we will be famine for the word of the Lord. But Lord, we may not have food, but Lord, your word is the food of God. That's what Matthew 4, 4 says of God. We will eat of your word. We will chew of your word, O oh God. And Lord, we will dwell in your word in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And Lord, where we live, O oh God, that land, O oh God, of oh my mouth will be full of your word, full of your presence, full of your glory in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We thank you, Holy Spirit of God. We understand, O oh God, it's a high time for us, O oh God, to possess the land because the enemy, O oh God, is taking over, O oh God. But Lord, we will not allow the enemy to take over. But Lord, we will take over the land because you have given unto us. And Lord, wherever the... Oh Lord, the soul, or oh foot of our soul, O oh God, will tread upon the soul of our foot, tread upon, O oh God. 
you will give unto us in the name of Jesus. Enlarge the borders of everyone in the name of Jesus. Every struggle, every mountain which your people are facing, oh God, I pray. You will, Lord, oh my master, move the mountain. That's what your word says, oh God. Your word is like a fire. In Jeremiah talks about it, oh God. Your word is like fire and hammers, oh God, oh my master. Every obstacle is in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let your word break everything, oh God, as a hammer breaks the stone. And Lord, every mountain be broken by your word in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh God. Every poverty be broken, oh Lord, by the hammer of your word in the name of Jesus. Every unemployment be broken by your word in the name of Jesus, oh God. Everything, oh God, oh my master, which your people are facing, may it be, oh God, of oh, infirmity, may it be, oh God, breakthroughs they are looking for, oh my master. Lord, break, oh God, oh my master. And Lord, let the breakthrough come in everyone's life in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you for speaking to us, oh God. We treasure your word, oh God, in our lives, oh God, because we call ourselves Joshua generation, oh God, and we will possess the land, and Lord, we will live in peace in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, O God, for your congregation, O God. Faithfully, O God, they came to, O Lord, of my master, worship you, to offer their sacrifice unto you. I pray, Almighty God, bless them in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Bless each and every child in this church. Bless each and every child in the womb in our church, O God. Bless each and every single and youth in our church, O God. Bless each and every couple in our church, O God. Bless each and every elders and leaders in our church, O God. Bless every job, marriage, finance in our church in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, O God. That your people will never lack any good thing in the name of Jesus, God. Your people will be rich, O God, in cattle, in silver and gold, in faith and in your word, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Bless them, O God, as the Lord, they go out from this place. Let your blessings overtake them in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, bless Israel, bless Jerusalem. Let your peace, protection be upon your nation in the name of Jesus, God. Even this ruler of Sharjah, O God, we remember, O God, give him thy salvation in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, God. Your servants, O God, Pastor Sam and all in the children as they are traveling, O God, bless them in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. As, Lord, they are getting ready, O God, to, O Lord, deliver your word, O God, in those land of wilderness, O God, I pray that, Lord, your word, O God, will fall into the good ground and will bring a great harvest, 30, 60, 100, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. As the whole week, O God, we are fasting and praying and seeking your face, O Lord, you will, O Lord, meet the point of our needs here in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, O God. We thank you, we bless you. We praise you, worship you, we adore you, magnify you, because all belongs to you, my master. In Jesus' most mighty and matchless and precious name, we pray, Father. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us until he comes again. And all of us said, Amen, Amen. Thank you.